I am Kimmy with On William Street, and here we are in week seven, our final week of our fall harvest quilt along. So this week, all of your vegetables should have been completed in the previous weeks, and then you may either have individual vegetables or you may have sewn them together in their groups. Um, all we're going to focus on this week is getting them sewn together and adding the borders. If you already sewed them together into their groups, it should go super quick and super easy. If you haven't done that yet or still have some groups that you need to finish up, it will take a little bit longer. But still, it's really not a big deal. A few straight seams and you're done and ready to go. So you will have your top complete and be ready to actually quilt it. When we were putting the Fall Humphreys quilt on together, I had a few people ask if I was going to share some quilting ideas and, and request some different quilting ideas for how to go ahead and finish your quilt when it's all done. I thought, sure, I can absolutely do that. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna share a few different types of quilting ideas and quilting plans of varying skill levels um, so that you can kind of take those and, and tweak them and make them your own. Also, in the blog post, if you are going to send your quilt out to somebody else and have them long arm quilt it, I've gone ahead and picked some different pantographs that I think would work really well with it, have a little bit more of a modern um, take on them, and I think that they would pair really well with the quilt top if you want to kind of take that list and talk to your long arm quilter and see if those are some options that they have available, um, if there's one of those that you like as well. So the first quilting plan I have here is probably going to look a little familiar, and this is the one that I actually did on our first Fall Harvest quilt. And it is definitely a full custom. Um, I'm gonna put this one up there, so if there's some others who like a lot of quilting or totally into um, going all out with the full custom, everything's kinda got its own little thing, I'm gonna place this up there. You can take it, use as much or as little of it as you like, kinda give you some ideas. Uh, what I wanna do really fast though is kinda walk you through how I quilted this. And I definitely went ahead and broke it down into sections. I had it loaded on my long arm. If you're not using a long arm, you can adjust things a little bit differently. Um, but I went ahead and I went put in the um, the straight lines first and the channels and I broke down the sections then all I had to do is fill in the section on this one I did mark these lines and then used my ruler to come in and do the uh, diagonal lines there here this one I did it all freehand I just kind of kept them all the same length and went all the way back and forth across but like I said after I'd done this line I would have come in and marked in this line um, and then went ahead and did the shapes around the vegetables and I just used the edges of the vegetables to move around to get uh, where I needed to go to fill in the background. Um, down here in this section, this is just our uh, circle pops. So really, you just make circles until it looks good. And this one is really nice because you eventually end up looking like you have really nice circles, even though they totally aren't perfect. Um, if you have a flat side, just keep going until it's not a flat side. So super fun. This one, I didn't bother marking out the grid. I had a couple little spots where I had to squeeze circles in there. If you wanna be super picky, you can go and try to find them. So it's just gonna depend on how perfect you wanna be. If you don't mind if it's perfect or not, just you know, have at it, have fun. Um, this next design is a grid design. So I did mark all of my grid lines in here first, but I did not sew them for this design. This one, um, I actually went ahead and marked them in, and then what you do is it works like an orange pill if you've done a continuous orange pill. You start in this corner, you're gonna do the here, back up, down, across, back up, and it just is this little half loopy motion. And then after you get to this side, then you go ahead and do all the way across the top, and then go down to your next row. So then I would mark the next row, um, I did use a ruler so it was nice and even um, and then come in and again fill in up down across and I just kind of worked across it like that in sections then come over and you know and fill in the different areas so that's how that design went in down here I just did lines every half an inch quarter of an inch half an inch apart and I just echoed that shape then again as I moved down I would have came in and marked you know kind of some of these other designs these other main lines before I filled those designs in. This is another one where I've got the grid. I just marked it in on a diagonal this time. It's not a perfect 45 or anything. It's just random diagonal. I think I matched it probably to a line somewhere else. Um, and then it's the same thing. It's a grid design. So you're gonna come in and do this side, this side, this side, now then work your way down. And then again, back all the way across the top. Then you would come in and do the next row. But that one I, again, did not um, actually so the uh, squares, I just marked them and then just went ahead and put the shapes on the inside. 
Um, for this section, this one I did actually sew all the squares. So I marked the squares. Uh, I didn't necessarily mark the diagonal lines because I've got the squares now, but you can mark them if you need to. So I marked in all the squares and then came in and just filled in back and forth these half of them. But this one, all everything got stitched out. Uh, and then we have down here and it's just three close lines, a big space, three close lines, a big space. Over here, finished off with something easy and I just did the wiggles. This is the same thing, I just freehand it. Just try to kind of mimic the one before and it, it works well enough that it's not a big deal. As far as the vegetables on this, because I had so much going on in the background, I actually just went ahead, outlined them, um, and then just did straight lines. I did vary them, so some of them got lines that way, some of them got vertical lines this way, and for all of the green parts, I went ahead and just um, echoed them. I did use where there are seams available, I did use seams to kind of sneak down in there and echo that so I didn't have to you know, break thread and, and re-bury threads and everything where possible. So I kind of eliminated that as much as possible. So that kind of gives you the walkthrough of this main quilting plan. All right, if you want to still go custom, but you don't want to go quite as, as intense as that, what I've done on this one is I flipped them and I've done the different um, quilting designs on the vegetables themselves and then kept it simple in the back. And what I did for the back is honestly just do the wavy lines. And the reason I chose this is in my mind, it kind of reminds me of the rows in our garden. We would always, they were much straighter than this, um, but we would always go through and mark out the rows first and then we would have it, we have a nice big plot of garden and then you would fill in all your vegetables around it. So this just kind of is reminiscent of those rows that you would plant all of your vegetables in. So what I've done here is the same thing, kind of kept the green a little bit simpler and just varied the lines in different directions. So some of them did diagonal, some of them I did horizontal lines here in the um, broccoli, some of them, you know, echoed it a little bit. If you move across the green here, you can come in and echo that without having to break it. And what I would do is I would definitely use these lines to move back and forth. So move in, when I touch this vegetable, I would come in, fill in this vegetable, and then carry on my next one. So you can use these lines to move around and move in between the vegetables. Um, on the carrot, I've just done a ribbon candy, an elongated ribbon candy look. Back and forth on it. And then on the beads, I did um, wishbones. And I only picked five different designs, and then I went ahead and repeated them. So you can see the beets and the tomatoes are both the wishbones, the ribbon candies I have here on the carrots and on the eggplant, the swirls I've done on the broccoli and on the squash. Big, I did plan these as bigger pebbles. You can do little tiny ones, but that can be a little insane. It can take a long time, so it just depends on what size you like, but pebbles here and pebbles on the pumpkin. And then as you can see here on the green pepper and the potato, I've just done a varying um, straight line. So when you do a straight line, and then as you're going back up, you're just gonna wiggle it. And then just a straight line down, over, wiggle it back up. Straight line down, wiggle it back up. And the reason I went ahead and only did five designs is that repetition can kind of help tie everything together and tie all those elements together and it's easier. I only have to come up with five designs instead of ten, so it's kind of a win-win in both directions. If you want to just go with it all over design but you're doing it yourself, this is one that I've uh, kind of picked because it's really a fairly simple design. It's really easy to do uh, and it would work well on a domestic sewing machine. You can put it on your long arm and easily do the rows back and forth or if you're doing it on your domestic, I would actually turn it and I would quilt it like this. So you'd quilt your lines down and then fill in your wishbones back and work your way across vertically. But it's really simple. You're just gonna kind of mim mimic the line ahead of it. The thing with this is it doesn't have to be exact. It kind of adds some movement. And after I do that design, that line, I'm gonna come back this direction. And this one I am gonna touch in varying spots. So I'm gonna go opposite so that they kind of come together and touch. And that gives me the spot to come through here and to fill in all the wishbones. You can really do um, as many lines as you like. I went ahead and did three here, and then when I got done over here, you would just come back and echo. You can do three, you can do four, sometimes you can do three, sometimes you can do four. It doesn't have to be exact. It just adds a lot of fun texture and movement, but it's easy to work across even in a on a domestic machine, um, and it goes pretty quick. So if you want something that's a a little bit simpler, a fun all over pattern. And obviously it's not going to stand out quite as much because you're not going to be quilting it with a dark gray thread. 
you could if you wanted to. I'm not going to recommend it. For all of these, I would just do a white because of the white background. Um, if you did want to do something different on the vegetables, you could use a light yellow and that would blend really well with most of those vegetables. But I like don't like changing thread. Um, if I change thread, that means that I'm going to have to be breaking thread and bearing a lot of thread. So I don't worry too much about changing a lot of thread colors. And I would just go through and do the whole thing um, probably in white. So it just depends on the look that you like and what you're willing to do. So a light yellow or, um, yeah, I'd probably go with a light yellow on the vegetables if I was changing the color out and just do them all the same. Or you could be really crazy and you know swap them out and do a different color to match each vegetable. And then it's really, really gonna blend. And um, if you have a little bit of mistakes here and there, you're not gonna really. I will put all of these um, on our blog post so you'll see them with the video on our website so that you can reference them. If there's bits and pieces that you like out of them, feel free to take and copy, change them, tweak them, make them your own, do whatever you want to do. Also, like I said, I will have those pantographs, uh, a list of pantographs as well, so that if you're taking it to a long arm quilter, you can kind of look through and see what some of those are. Um, if you want to know what the pantograph looks like before you go talk to your long arm quilter, they'll have little thumbnails and everything too, so you can see those see some different options and find what's going to work best. The thing with with this quilt is just, you know, it's kind of definitely more of a fun graphic modern quilt. So the things that I picked were definitely more of a modern type quilting motifs, um, angular shapes, any of that type of thing is really going to work really well and, and blend with the whole overall look of the quilt. We just want to say thank you so much for joining in this us in this quilt along. Um, we've been talking about doing one for a while and we've had a lot of fun putting this quilt together with you. We had so much fun designing it and we've loved hearing the feedback from you guys um, on, on your experiences making this quilt and we definitely look forward to doing some more. So again, thank you, thank you for joining us and, per and supporting us in our little endeavor and we absolutely will have more fun things to come and lots of fun things planned for next year. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, where you can see all of the videos that we're making and we will leave these videos up They're not going anywhere So if you have somebody else that comes along later and wants to make it and wants to see the helps direct them to the site You want to make it again later to forget something want to rewatch they will always be here for your uh, Convenience and for your uh, resources for this quilt top and we will see you next time. Bye